If we ask you what is the most important part of an airplane, what would you answer? Perhaps the wings or power plant would come first, then the cockpit, and in the case of fighter jets, the weapons bay. It is likely that you leave the landing gear for last, even though that system is the link between heaven and earth, a fundamental tool to ensure the survival of the passengers of any commercial or military aircraft. In this new military aviation video we are going to learn about the arduous production and maintenance process of these components, and how they are prepared to support tens of tons of weight on a daily basis. A landing gear is the part of any aircraft responsible for absorbing the kinetic energy produced by the contact between the aircraft and the runway during the landing and takeoff phase. The tires are the first element to absorb the impact, but it is not enough to stop a beast of tens of tons. The train must have a damping system to be able to reduce that blow. The total weight of the aircraft, the distribution of that weight, the number and size of the wheels, the landing vertical speed, and the tire pressure are just some of the factors that influence damping. In other words, the landing gear is a precise and complex piece of machinery that must function perfectly every time a plane touches down. Airbus is one of the world's leading aviation companies, and to maintain that standard it must turn to subcontractors that produce the best aeronautical parts. That is where Safran, one of the main landing gear manufacturing companies, comes into play. For example, the landing gear of the Airbus A350-900 was designed by Safran following the specifications of its client to correctly distribute the weight of the aircraft. In its most frequent version, the A350-900 has a maximum takeoff weight of 268,000 kg, and can exceed 300,000 kg in the case of the A350-1000. The landing gear must be able to support and mobilize these masses, the question is how is such machinery built? As with any creative process, it starts with an idea. Engineers start by creating 3D models and prototypes that allow visualizing the different parts that make up the landing gear. At this stage, tests are usually carried out in a wind tunnel, that is, a closed space where real flight conditions are imitated to check the reaction of the design and avoid possible errors. Once the model passes various tests and evaluations, it reaches the hands of the manufacturing team. This prototyping process may seem cumbersome, but in the long run it helps reduce cost overruns caused by design issues, if you do a good pre-production job, there's no reason why the result shouldn't be top-notch. The Safran company uses millimeter precision industrial machines. When we talk about the landing system of a commercial airplane, there is no margin for error, the lives of hundreds of people are at stake every day. The materials are heat treated to increase their resistance to corrosion and the hardness of the structure. The parts are then covered with a protective coating, painted and inspected by the quality control system. Once the pieces are ready, the assembly process begins, which is done by hand and with machinery, a combination of human strength and robotic precision that ensures that each part is placed correctly. Of course, before being installed on the aircraft, the landing system will be tested to verify that it is ready to withstand the tens of thousands of kilograms that it will have to support on the runway. Another industry titan is Daher Sakata, a producer of components for commercial aircraft, a long-standing partner of Airbus. While the company specializes in smaller aircraft, it has long been entrusted by Airbus with the production of landing gear doors. Daher uses state-of-the-art technology and computerized production systems that allow full control of the final result. Robotic hands play a central role as they can make precise cuts and adjustments identical to the parameters entered into the main computer. The Daher Sakata doors are practically works of art, their engineering is precise and mistakes are not allowed, a failure in this part of the aircraft can result in a tragedy. It is generally thought that military aeronautical engineering is summed up in the design of wings, wing profiles and powerful engines, but the truth is that the landing gear is one of the most important parts of any modern aircraft. After all, it is the first contact between the plane and the surface, and without proper operation, the descent would end in tragedy or, at the very least, an unpleasant experience. 
This is even more relevant in military aviation, where much higher performance standards are held and aircraft are subjected to extreme conditions. Keep in mind that, for example, a C-130 Hercules has an empty weight of 34,000 kilograms, but it is designed for mass transportation, so its maximum takeoff weight is 70,000 kilograms. This capacity can be applied to the transport of 92 soldiers, 64 paratroopers or 74 stretchers. To ensure the survival of these people, a good landing gear is essential. At the hill base of the United States Air Force, the Heavy Lifter Assemblies Unit is located. There the landing gears for a huge variety of aircraft are assembled, but also the meticulous process of inspection and maintenance of landing systems already in use is carried out. From utility models like the C-17 Globemaster III to beasts of war like the A-10 Warthog and F-16 Fighting Falcon, they all go through a comprehensive piece-by-piece -piece overhaul process that involves tearing down, repairing, and replacing damaged parts to leave the system practically like new. Depending on the model, the overhaul must be carried out every 6 to 10 years to ensure the maximum operability of the aircraft and prevent accidents when taking off and landing the units. It is a meticulous process that involves engineers, operators and experts from different branches who are in charge of inspecting from the largest components to the smallest screw. This is not easy, a landing gear can have up to 2,000 parts that must be serviced and checked. Not only that, but every part of the process is documented and recorded, to ensure that everyone involved correctly fulfilled their role in the review pipeline. Once the reassembled landing gear is tested and verified, it is reinstalled on the craft from which it came. But there are extreme cases where the overhaul that heavy lifter assemblies can provide is not enough. That is when the 532 Maintenance Squad, located in Utah, enters the scene. It is the U.S. Air Force Center of Excellence for large-scale overhaul and repair. There, the landing gear, wheels and brakes of the 17 North American combat ships are maintained, repaired and modified, especially those that require more intense work, either due to the damage with which they arrive or the number of parts that must be replaced. They specialize in receiving virtually unusable units in order to return them like new. To do this, they disassemble each part and inspect it with various methods to determine which are suitable for maintenance and which should be discarded. This includes a bath with special materials that remove the protective coatings and a fluorescent light inspection that reveals details that the naked eye could not see. After a long process of reassembly and conditioning, the repaired landing gears return to the hangars from which they left, restarting the process with an increased useful life. Landing gears are essential pieces, and we hope this video has helped you learn more about how they work and how they stay in service. We'll meet again in the next episode of Military Aviation.